So today my focus is on collaborative arts marketing. And um, I did come across a really great site. Um, there's, there's a number of sites that will help you with arts marketing. You probably have seen them. But this one really talked about collaborative arts marketing as a process. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, and that's the AMS Planning and Research. So if you have somebody on your board or if you yourself are really interested in uh, best practices from um, not just the technical part of what do we do, how do we do it, but, but a lot about why and how things are going elsewhere and when foundations have had a chance to really dig in and see what's working, how, in, in what ways, um, at, particularly as they're looking for, okay, so what should we be funding? You know, lots of our foundations all over the country and locally as well, are getting more and more advanced in their own thinking. How, how should we be, they want to know how can they help you, they want to know what should they be stressing and looking for. So this group, the AMS Planning and Research, did a really wonderful um, essay and a, a whole thing for the Knight Foundation um, a couple years ago, and they have a section called Building Blocks of Collaborative Arts Marketing. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on um, right now, is Basically, the, what, is, what are we talking about with collaborative arts marketing? What are some of the examples? And there's a number of you with particularly great experiences that I'm going to uh, bring up and, and share your own uh, examples uh, locally so that um, everybody can kind of keep those in mind. Obviously, each of us has our own marketing plan each year. And there's, it's even harder to find. We all want to collaborate, but it's hard to find that little bit of time that little bit of extra money, um, staff time, it's all very precious, so it's hard to, to do that. But there are a number of ways, a number of times when um, it's really a great idea. And it's always great for the Arts Council to be engaged in that process on your behalf, with you, in collaboration with you. Every year we should be doing something. And the question is just going to be, so what exactly should we be layering in? So, so I too am driving toward what, what should we be doing, what do you want, and then what should we do um, in basically the year ahead. So when we look at collaborative arts marketing, one of the aspects of the, one of the building blocks is um, what we're doing today and what we do every month here, which is sharing best practices. Just generally. It doesn't cost anything. These sessions are free. When I don't pay the people who come and talk, I rely on people like Nicole who provide their expertise and, um, and who are willing to come and share uh, something about uh, their, their own expertise that really makes uh, our whole efforts work really well. So we already have that. So, so we're, we're good there. Um, certainly, I can do more. I think the Arts Council can do more in terms of uh, making that all that information even more readily available. That's what this is for, taping these sessions is to help. So if you can't come or you want to go back and say, well, well, when Nicole Garzino was giving us that great talk about photography, what exactly did she say? You know, maybe your, your notes are sketchy um, or you just want to see how she said it and one, one more time, you can go back. So those live on our website and they're, they're also living on the Access Monterey Peninsula website too. So you can go back to those sessions anytime. And, um, then the next building block is pooling database resources and joint prospecting. You know, not necessarily, um, it can be a joint prospecting of, um, of audience members or, or something similar. And in, in that case, I think trying to do something countywide, that's probably unrealistic. But I know a number of you have overlapping members. And that can be a really great thing to share. And you can figure out different ways to do it in a way that doesn't compromise your members' privacy. You can figure out a way so that they can do an opt-in uh, if they'd like information from this other group. I know a lot of you have been doing wonderful cross-promotion on your websites. That is huge. I know a number of you are doing some kind of trade in your programs, also huge. Bodies, it's all physics, right? It, ultimately, it's physics. Bodies in motion will stay in motion. 
but a body at rest is really our greatest challenge. So once you have people who are up and running, they will come to different things. So all that cross-promoting that you're doing, um, I know it can seem to some of your staff and board members and volunteers that, that, that you're giving away the store, that you're giving something away. But you know it comes back. It all comes back because you've got those bodies in motion. And the more they go to different things, the more they realize the true value of the arts to their lives, to their families' lives, to education, to the community. They can see the spur that it gives to the economy as people go out to dinner, friends come from all over and come to stay. They can see that. The more they're out and about, the more they go. So all the cross-promotion that you're doing comes back to you in myriad benefits. And, um, and it's also a way for people to, a lot, a lot of people are, are willing to come. They want to come to see you. They're very excited about you. But when they start to plan their weekend, they have a number of people to convince. So when there's that cross-promotion, that also helps with that convincing part to, to grab more people to come with them because a lot of people uh, are not on their own. They are, they're making decisions for a number of people or with a number of people. And, and the more that you can convince them to keep going, to keep coming out, so that it becomes a habit. You ever go to um, a Turkish, um, anywhere, any place in Turkey at all, there'll, there'll be a, a number of people who are selling carpets. And their whole question is not, will you buy a carpet? Their question is, which one? So if you can get people to that habit, where they're looking every week. We have the, the Monterey County Weekly. We have the Go section in the Herald. Um, we have our site, Monterey Bay 365. There's a number of places. There's all kinds of online calendars. We use everything, and um, especially the things that are free, and, um, and get people in the habit. The more that we are out there, the more that we're talking to the public, the more people have the habit of looking for us. What's happening this weekend? So it becomes not just a question of, should I do something this weekend, but selecting what should they do, and then gathering their people and moving into your, your place. So all that sharing is, is really, it, it's not just me saying it's best practices. It is really the way to go. And, uh, and we'll talk about um, some more of that in a minute. Um, there are times when um, you may use this other building block jointly um, negotiating vendor relationships. So, so that's a kind of thing that, I actually now I'm taking this as a cue for me too, is that really I should be talking more to radio stations, TV stations, uh, print, everywhere, to see what we could do to create um, uh, ways to, to bring some of those prices down. Everybody has a nonprofit rate, so in that way we've kind of already done it. But there may be something that we could do, or a season that we could do, or something where, where we can drive the price down just even a little bit further for arts groups. But I would still recommend that you find a cohort of groups, and it doesn't have to be arts groups. I'll always be thinking about who cares about the subject of your next show, whether your show is on stage or in a gallery or wherever it is. There's got to be some sort of subject matter. One of the great um, uh, grantees that we have is the uh, Compassionate Care Alliance. They, we support their drama. The Arts Council supports their drama program. They, the drama depicts people struggling with end-of-life issues. And so for us, that's really awesome. But you might be a theater group who one day has that as their subject, and another day has something else. There's always something. You can have a really great partnership with a nonprofit who delves into that exclusively, primarily, and, and is willing to partner with you to, to provide cross-promotion. Cross that can be unbelievably powerful, because that is a huge wedge to get those people who are sitting around wishing they were doing something but just never quite getting there to become one of those bodies in motion. You get them in motion cross-promote others, all of a sudden you've created another group, whole group of people who are coming to arts groups. It, it all works so, so well. Um, and then you can work with them about that leveraging. You know, Maybe they're doing advertising for something that they have coming up. Um, even though 
all nonprofits are stretched thin and all businesses are stretched thin and everybody's careful. Everybody's really careful. They can, partnerships are where real magic happens. And uh, so, so I urge you to always stay on the lookout for it. And it doesn't cost a thing to sit down with somebody for coffee and say, hey, let's just explore something. And it doesn't cost much more to get your teams together and explore possibilities. It's all really good and potentially extraordinarily powerful. And also, I would urge you to think too about when you see um, a non-arts organization developing something with the arts, pay attention to how that is. Find out how did that get going? How did that get started? Maybe it's something that you could become a part of and then everybody's advertising through their, their memberships. Um, it, it's, it's so, so incredibly powerful. Um, the next building block is consolidating the box office and customer service operations. So if you are, if you're still doing your own ticketing, you may really want to look at uh, what other people are, are using um, in, in ways that might keep driving your costs down. And there's a number of um, outlets that uh, locally and nationally that can help you with that. Obviously, there's a cost to that too. But if you feel like you're really ready to do something else, um, start, start asking around. And I'll, I'll start posting these on our website. The website is artsformc.org. I know a lot of you are already familiar with that. but um, under a resources section, we'll, we'll start adding those. So that's another kind of thing that you can look at. So we're still driving toward uh, working smarter all the time, trying to figure out what are the kinds of things that you're doing that maybe you don't really need to do. You can give to somebody else who specializes in that, or you can collaborate with others. Um, and and there's, there's a consultant I came across um, uh, just the other day. He said, Every day you should be trying something different, but you try it on a small basis. You just try a little something. So if you're thinking about changing the way you're doing ticketing, maybe it's not for everything all of a sudden. Maybe you just try a new vendor for one thing. See how that works out. Or you try a collaboration on something small, see how that felt, and then, and then go, go bigger. But um, this, this is the way for us to go forward. And in so many ways, we, we, we would all kind of like to just keep things steady, but we can't. Everything has to be moving forward. We have to push ourselves, and we have to push our organizations to move forward, constantly pushing, and, uh, and being willing to take at least small risks in the, in the hope of actually making bigger risks and keep going forward. And we have to always, always, always keep our community at the forefront of our minds. What do they need? If the more we think about the irony is the more we just think about us, the less we can communicate, the less we know, and the less powerful we can be in the community. So, so we really have to think about the community first and being out there, being out and about, coming to these meetings too and seeing what each other is doing, that's all good. Uh, everything that we can do with cultural tourism partnerships, that's all really very powerful. Hotels, restaurants, um, that also is one of those things to get more people to come into our area. And uh, what the tourism industry really needs is for people um, not just to come, but to stay longer than they might have originally thought uh, and to come back. So when they come to what you're doing, then that is the way they feel really great about our area and uh, are willing to come back. And, if, and, and you know, a lot of you already probably have people who are visiting in our area, and you already know they come back and back and back and back. This is something to get out there. Let people, other people know. Um, when you're doing your reporting to any of your funders, any of, any of your uh, folks, let people know that this percentage of your people are, are coming from out of the area, and um, there's a huge economic impact from, from that, even from one evening, even from um, just a few concerts. But the, the uh, cumulative effect is huge. As people want to come back to see you, they're coming back to our area. And, and it, all, it all works together again. Um, then the last thing is um, that I, I really want to talk about in great depth at, at another session, but I want you to start thinking about 
is um, public information and public advocacy campaigns. And I think about them as two separate things. There's, uh, we, we want to talk to people about the general value of the arts. That's public awareness. Uh, the arts are great for education in a kind of a generic way. That's still public awareness. Advocacy is focusing on what you want to be different and, and having a legislative um, something attached to that. So the Arts Council is very committed to both of those things. I'm going to be trying to stimulate my board to really think about um, advocacy in, in the next couple of years to really think about ways, particularly with arts education. As we all know, um, there, there's some movements in the countrywide, statewide, locally, to, to at least allow more arts within the school day, to, to promote it in some sort of a small way. But to really restore the central role that the arts should have in education, that's going to take more of a push. The, the greatest news of all is that the No Child Left Behind regimen that we've all been um, really suffering with. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Um, for the last 10 years, it is eroding and going away and softening. And um, one thing that you should know about with all that is that there is uh, simultaneously a, a, a huge movement called STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. There's a parallel and hopefully merging uh, movement, particularly within California, to turn that STEM to STEAM. Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. It's all good. It's all synchronistic. It all really works well together. Um, totally synergistic. That that when we we know we all know how how people really learn, and that when people are learning through the arts, um, that is when they they don't just learn it for today. They learn it for their lifetime. And when um, when the arts are interconnected with all these other things, our scientists really look at our scientists. They are becoming fast our greatest allies because. They are realizing that they, the, the more um, challenging their own work actually gets, the more they have to rely on, on metaphor to figure out what are, they, what are they looking at and what's next. And the more they realize the urgency of their own messaging, they need to harness the arts to, have, to connect with the public because they can't just do it with their, with their, um, their journaling alone. It's just not working. And so, so the, the, art, the scientists and the artists are really going to be finding more and more common ground in the years ahead. And that's all going to be awesome. So, so those are the basic building blocks, connecting information, connecting people, and then trying to move everything ahead in some way. So I would really, really just urge you in your own, uh, as, as you, particularly as you get into any kind of a strategic planning idea, um, as you prepare for any retreat you might have, but even on a small scale, try something. Just try a little something with a, with somebody, somebody that you like, somebody that you think would be easy, and and just see what it took to get that off the ground, to make it happen. What were the benefits? Then you can share that with your your board as a whole. You can share it with your community as a whole, and see where that can get you. Um, I'm I'm really really as you can see a big fan of, of these kinds of things uh, because I see them working all the time and um, it, it's really, really very, very powerful. Um, another, uh, so a couple of examples I'll just give to you and then, um, and then I'll bring up Susan and I'll bring up Ellen. Um, there's a great example in Charleston, the Charleston Regional Alliance for the Arts. Uh, in 2001, created a big collaborative arts marketing campaign. And when they did it, they did it big. And they, so they had radio and TV ads, they had print, they had video, they had e-newsletters and e-blasts all over the place. But they also did some really clever things. They did um, things like they have pedicabs. And so they had pedicab drivers promoting the event with rack cards. MST is already, the Monterey Salinas Translate, Transit has already agreed um, to do something for us, and um, we're probably going to start with a poetry focus. And but but we can also use that as a platform to advertise the arts generally. So um, and also obviously your concierges at the at all the hotels, even if you just pick the closest one to you, the the biggest one. In their case, they had a thousand rack cards at all the uh, concierge professionals. 
and they they also took some uh, festivals and worked through them. They just did a whole lot of things that were were pretty awesome all at once. Another group to look at, um, San Diego is is stellar. If you look at anything that San Diego is doing, um, they they do tons of collaborative marketing uh, campaigns, primarily tourism oriented. But a lot of our tourism campaigns have a, a residential benefit. So the focus might be on, on tourism and, and whatnot, but it always has a local benefit. There's, there's no doubt about that um, in many different ways. One of the, the uh, consultants that I really like so much and I brought here for several different, these kinds of sessions, uh, he, he's the only one I've paid. He's the only one from outside, but uh, he grew up in Pacific Grove. So, or who's that? Uh, is Ron Evans. And his site is groupofminds.com. He is really brilliant because he's looking at everything. He's, his focus is arts and technology, but he's looking at everything from um, the, the psychology of all of this. Oh, this, this the psychology of decision making, uh, how do people feel? Um, and that's something to always, always bear in mind, too. You remember what Maya Angelou had said that people will forget what you said. They'll even forget what you've done, which can sometimes be a very big comfort for me. But they'll never forget how you made them feel. And that's something that we can do no matter what size our budget, no matter who's there. We can always make people feel welcome, excited, thrilled, and energized. And that, that's a big part of what we need to do. So what Ron takes a look at all of us and he says, Quit with the discounts. And some people will say, make everything free, everything discounts. He is all about the value. And he is all about making sure, so when you do your partnerships, do your collaborations, yeah, you can have a discount, especially for this group of people and whatnot. But what people really care about, because as our retail friends can see, there's just so far you can go with that before people start to wait for your discounts. Well, I'm not going to come in this day, I'm going to wait or I'll only go when it, the price is half, half off or whatever. So you still have to experiment with that for your people, but, but really, I think Ron's on the right track to think about value. What, what are people going to get? And, and the thing that, that Ron um, talks about, on his, he has this great blog, um, so this particular one is marketing in a downturn economy. You know, what, what are we supposed to do when, when things seem so difficult for everyone? Well, it turns out, that maybe people can't buy the house of their, of their dreams right now, and maybe they have had to make big changes and they're going to wait for the next car or whatnot, and maybe they have to make all kinds of, of things, but that doesn't mean they have no money, and that doesn't mean they don't still need to connect. That's what the arts offer. It's a way for people to literally connect, to, to feel the energy of other people, to feel inspired by, moved by, changed by our artists. And, and this is something that people need every day of the week, all year long. And this is what we uniquely offer the world, a chance to really dig deep and feel something that is different, to learn something, but in, in, in a really great, fun way. And, and Ron would really have us all focus on that. And um, as we develop our collaborations and as we develop our plans, uh, it's, it's really important for, for people to, to never lose heart about those kinds of things. We have to run the numbers, we have to do well with our budgeting, and we have to uh, keep driving those costs down, but not never losing spirit, never losing the heart of everything that we have to do. So thank you for being here. And at this time, I would love to bring up um, Susan Breen. Can we have you come up to this microphone here? And um, Susan has done, uh, uh, sorry? Oh, yeah, sure, you're very welcome. So Susan uh, has come to our area from Pennsylvania, and we are so, so lucky. Um, for a number of years, she was dividing her time between Pennsylvania and uh, California, but now is, is steady with us. So she has a lot to share, and I've asked her to just share a little bit about her experience in Pennsylvania, where she was part of a really great um, collaborative effort. Yes, my name is Susan Breen. I have my own business, my own consulting company that deals in public relations, marketing, and business coaching. And yeah, Pauline and I met a few years ago when I was, as she said, doing half time here and half time at a home back in Pennsylvania. But um, my husband and I have been permanent residents now of California for a couple of years. 
And I want to talk about some co-op things that we did in Pennsylvania that I think might help here. But I also wanted to remind all of you, how many of you are aware that we're in a three-way co-op right now? Here we are at AMP with the invitation of the Arts Council, but also at the invitation of Arts Habitat, who has their own artist studio here. So right now, we're sort of talking co-op advertising. Some of us have never been in this studio before, and um, it shows a new audience of people, yet another facility and another element, if you will, of arts that exists in our community. Last night, we were at an event at the Stardust Playhouse. How many of you have ever been in the Stardust Playhouse? Tiny, wonderful, little, intimate theater on Fremont Boulevard. I'd never been there. But th we were there at the invitation of Arts Habitat, because that's one of their regular meeting places now for a great program called Arts in Progress. So any time you see organizations that sit down together and talk together, spend money together, um, put their banners, if you will, on top of a, a piece of uh, print advertising in a newspaper, and we have examples of that here, too. Um, I wrote down two very obvious ones, one of which is the OCO Theater in downtown Monterey, and the, is it the Monterey? Trio Bistro there on uh, the back street, if you will. And for years, they've been selling a dinner in the theater ticket. That's co-op advertising. It's right under our noses. The others are um, the Herald, the Weekly, some of the other print publications will carry a full-page ad bannered by, let's say, the West End of Sand City. And in that block of full-page advertising could be 12 quarter-page ads, eight-page ads, for all of us in this room, and you share the cost of the entire page. Tom Nelson just told me a little while ago as we walked in here together this morning that um, he just paid $525 for a quarter page ad, but how is he going to track the return on that advertisement? And how do you ever find out if the value you paid for comes back to you? And that's very hard to do. But that's a lot of money for a quarter page ad, but perhaps two entities sharing the quarter page ad would certainly reduce your price in half. Let me talk a bit, little bit about the um, Pennsylvania Tourism Council. I had the great pleasure to be on their board of directors for a number of years, and we did big things. The Tourism Council would buy billboards, full page ads, and many print advertising or opportunities, including the state's annual visitor's guide. It would then offer back to any of the tourism entities in the state the opportunity to be part of those billboards, any of the size ads they wanted within the visitor's guide. And then these, these opportunities spread throughout the nation. If somebody called and wanted a Pennsylvania visitor's guide, they would see Harrisburg, they would see Gettysburg, they would see Valley Forge, they would see Pennsylvania Dutch Country, all on one page in one beautifully designed ad that everybody pulled their money and pulled their resources. And bingo, we had it. And, and though I don't like billboards, uh, a lot of people do, some people don't, um, we did have these huge, huge billboards all over the state of Pennsylvania. But it brought the cost down to the individual entities, which was very important. Um, I'm being a little fractious here because Paula Paula just threw this at us this morning. And said, by the way, I'd like you to make a statement. Um, okay, so we have local opportunities for that kind of co-op advertising. Uh, working in the state of Pennsylvania opened up my eyes to the fact that organizations could indeed share their money, share their ideas without impinging on their donor list, their privacy, their territory, working with the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Chamber of Commerce also gives you the opportunity to get your print materials out there. Nowadays, we have social media, which has unending opportunities for you to get the word out. And we can't forget that in the whole approach to marketing and advertising, too, is um, though we may not understand or appreciate or know how to do all of the aspects of social marketing, our audiences do. Certainly kids do. And kids are customers, too. A whole volume of books written about kids as customers. Because kids make decisions for families, like where do you want to eat tonight, kids? Well, the kids will make that decision. So 
a, look at them as a separate demographic for marketing. Um, they're easy to work with and easy to convince, and they they drive a lot of families towards how they spend their money. Um, so when we when we agree to co-op, and you call it collaborative, we back in Pennsylvania call it co-op advertising. Just remember that you are sharing ideas for the benefit of everybody. Everybody shares in the pages of advertising, and they share in the benefits and the returns. There are ways of tracking your your advertising by simply putting in discounts or putting in twofers or um, we could go on and on and on about examples, but you know, there are ways. So I don't know how much more time you want me to have. Um, call me, call Colette. There are ways to do this without spending a lot of money. And now I'd like to bring up Ellen. And Ellen Martin is with First Night Monterey. And uh, First Night is inherently a collaborative uh, program, as, as a lot of you know. So I asked her to say a few words about how that works and how she um, uh, amplifies her message by working with all the component parts. And thank you for having uh, this meeting today and weekly. It's really so valuable for all of us to come together, uh, meet each other, learn about what we're doing, and then raise each other up through our marketing programs. I'm Ellen Martin, and I'm the executive director of First Night Monterey. First Night is all about collaboration. It's a community celebration of the arts on New Year's Eve in a historic downtown Monterey. Our marketing plans begin with who is involved with First Night on New Year's Eve. How are we going to promote each other? And uh, so I just made some notes, which I will refer to because I'm not a very good speaker. <laughs> but um, we begin with uh, who's in our program and how can we partner with them? In our audience uh, right now is a member of eContori. Uh, for many years, off and on, eContori has been a partner performing at First Night. Um, they will barter with us. We'll put an ad in their program that comes out in December. Uh, and then we will promote them in our program ad. The program ad that First Night does comes out uh, between, uh, uh, like, just before Christmas. And uh, it features all the programmers, uh, pro performers, artists, uh, and community organizations that are in First Night. And um, we have a website that all the performers and organizations that are affiliated with First Night at firstnightmonterey.org, uh, uh, all of our sponsors are on. And there are hyperlinks then to the different organizations. So for instance, you'll go and Arts Council will be on our website and in our program ad, our program guide, which is on our, our also on our website. And you'll be able to click through to that organization and find out what their schedules are. Um, we use the web with our uh, with where we buy our ads and who we sponsor with. So, for instance, the Monterey uh, County Herald has also been a very good media sponsor. Uh, Comcast is a media sponsor, um, and then we also partner with lo lo local radio stations. We usually have 10 to 12 local radio stations. We're promoting them on our posters, in our advertising, our print our online, our web, uh, and then through our emails. We've learned this past year, especially coming to these fans' meetings, that social media can have a really big impact. And so our, our marketing plan this year leading up to First Night is that we start promoting um, not only our performers, uh, but we start promoting our sponsors and, uh, and our community uh, uh, service organizations that are affiliated with First Night. Um, we're asking all of our performers and our community vendors that they like us on Facebook, that they ask all of their uh, Facebook uh, friends to like us. And so building that part of our social, social media. Um, and then I have a favorite. I love Pinterest. And so I have on my Pinterest uh, site all things First Night. And it might not just be things at first night, but ideas for installations. And I'm really getting big hits for the other Pinterest people throughout the world 
And so um, we're going to really build up Pinterest, uh, a first night on Pinterest. And I am myself going to Pinterest more than Facebook uh, because it's so visually or, uh, you know, uh, interesting. And it's that electronic filing cabinet of, uh, of things that we put. Um, our constant contact is part of our marketing, um, how we email and how we're ramping up to our uh, programming. Um, so in our ads that we do with our print, we are going and uh, sponsoring with the Herald, with the Monterey County Weekly. MST is one of our sponsors where you might see on the back of the bus uh, the ads for first night. But then when people, we direct everybody to our website, and when you go to our website, you're going to get those links. You're going to get those information about the performers, about the uh, organizations like E. Cantori, uh, like um, anything that might be happening with Carmel uh, Performing uh, Academy, or if um, uh, Spectre Dance is part of uh, First Night. Um, and then our radio spots through our collaborating with the radio stations here on the Central Coast and having them um, be part of First Night and then having those ads. Um, we do a big marketing plan with the hotels, providing wholesale discount tickets to the, host at, ho to the local hotels. They're doing room promotions. That's up on their website. But we have found, and of course, First Night's all about family, uh, helping build family promotions. So a lot of the uh, hotels are doing promotions with the aquarium and First Night. The aquarium's open on uh, January 1st. And uh, because I'm propelled, uh, I'm writing the grant for um, the uh, Arts Council, for next year, I'm looking at and have contacted, like, what's happening at the Steinbeck Center? How can we promote going to these Bay Area families that are driving back, perhaps through Salinas? What can we promote? Um, so that's our moving forward and collaborating with other organizations. Um, but uh, partnering with the hotels can be very big. Um, and then partnering with your volunteers having them always promote what you're doing. Uh, yesterday, a volunteer came in to First Night, and she had uh, symphony information. She had uh, music or uh, information about what's going on at All Saints and said, can you put this out for us? And I'm like, yes. So that's another way, a small way, that we can continually raise each other up. And that's my model. Let's raise each other up. Uh, so through... Um, Programs like AMP, uh, uh, putting uh, First Night on um, uh, 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 their programs. And just one more thing, and that is, is that our program guide is a really great way to advertise your programs. And First Night is doing the Greenfield Harvest Festival. Everybody that's part of the Greenfield Harvest Festival goes into the Greenfield program, and that's printed and put in the South County newspaper. So small ways can generate big uh, returns. And that's by collaborating um, with other nonprofits, not only arts, but community and service. And um, so I hope that answers all your questions. And uh, thank you. If you're not already doing a lot of partnerships, collaborations, and whatnot, um, start to think about it. As you begin your plan for next year, add something. Whatever it is, you know, you might think of the details later, but make sure you have a placeholder, at least, in your plan for some sort of collaboration. And remember that our partners are other arts organizations that are like us. Anybody who has an interest in whatever subject may be coming through our way, uh, the businesses that are, are co-located, um, all the different, uh, any kind of tourism venue, restaurants, hotels, these are all potential partners. And if it seems like just too much to imagine putting them all together, no worries. You just put somebody together and you keep building from there over time. And uh, thanks so much, and thanks a million to Access Monterey Peninsula for uh, taping us today and having us on the air. These meetings happen once a month, and we welcome anybody who has anything to do with getting more people to more arts programming, more arts events. 
um, and just even people who are curious. But especially these meetings are all about um, making us all work smarter constantly and, and helping each other to, to learn um, without necessarily spending any money at all, um, getting be more connected with our communities, more effective in what we're doing, greater impact. The Arts Council has been around for 30 years, and we discover over and over and over again, as we look through your grant applications, as we see you out in the community, as we do this and that all over the place, we see over and over and over again that the arts is an answer. And you are all great examples, uh, and we're only getting better. So thanks again to everybody for participating today, and, and thanks again to Access Monterey Peninsula. Thank you. Thank you.